Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tom Davis, America's Canine Educator. I am here at the Upstate Canine Academy. It is absolutely freezing here in Upstate New York, but today we have a lovely video for you guys with a seven month old puppy. This dog is beautiful, fun, energetic, playful, all of the things that we expect and we find so lovely and adoring about puppies, but the owners are having problems trying to reel that in, trying to figure out what do we do with a dog or with a puppy that is pulling on the leash, jumping, barking, talking back, not coming when called. They came in, they need a reset. And today we're gonna do that. I'm gonna teach these guys what equipment they should be using, what to say, what not to say, how to hold the leash, how to talk to their dog, and all of the above. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I know I certainly did. No, she's a wonderful dog. I can't wait to see what she does in the future. If you guys haven't yet, do me a freaking solid favor, y'all. Like this video. I love seeing those likes coming in. Of course, subscribe to my channel if you guys haven't yet. We put videos out like this every single week. I appreciate you watching. Let's get into working with Noshi. What are we working on? Okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> Okay, I don't know how to use the, the collar. You don't have much direction with, with training. I've, I've done some, some local um, training a... classes, but it's not giving me enough, I don't think. She's a good dog. Their trainers have told me, like they said bad experiences have happened where her dog got embedded into the neck and so you know, she's scared. She's so they're like, don't use it, but she's such a willful dog that I oh, yeah. you know. What we want sure. more direction. So you guys just, just a huge reset on everything. Yeah, yeah just yeah, just yeah. get clarity on additional things we should be doing, because um, we want to. Obviously, our goal is to have her. As she's well looking. As she's looking to me for direction <coughs> a lot, and I don't. I don't know how to do it. Now she's <laughs> starting to beg for food, and I don't. I, I know I need the training because I, I don't. You know, I'm gonna mess her up. Okay. And she's a good dog, so yeah. I don't want to mess her up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll get started. This is gonna be fun. See how this is all the way extended here? Yeah. So if this is all the way extended without actually touching her, okay. that means yeah, it's too big. Okay. I'd like to eventually um, try to get her to work as a therapy dog. Okay. Yeah, a friendly, obedient dog is easy to make a therapy dog. So I like using four foot, quarter inch leashes. Mm -hmm. Gives you more feedback mm -hmm. if you're fishing. That's like a 60 pound test. This is like a four right. pound test. You can okay. feel a lot with this. Yeah. Let me just see where you're at first and then I'll be able to guide you from there. Okay, ready for your makeover? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, a couple things is the, the prong collar and the leash, it doesn't really matter what equipment you use. You guys came in the prong, that's what we're gonna use. So it could be slip collar, prong collar, uh, flat collar, harness, doesn't matter. Your communication with the dog is predicated off of the pressure that you put on the actual leash. Okay. So you are handling with two hands up like this, walking. So what you wanna do is, especially with a seven month old puppy, is you just take the leash and you fold it in half and you just hold the leash just like this. So some people will do this. I like to do it just like this because you can kind of flick the collar if you need to with your wrist. That's all it really takes. You can tell she's looking, she's like, what are, what are we doing? Yeah. But you're both staring at each other, so who's driving, right? <laughs> so what you wanna do is hold the leash, nice and relaxed, don't bundle it up, and then you just move forward, okay? So she's going to naturally follow suit to what you're doing. Shoulder straight, looking forward, loose leash, nice and relaxed, and she's just gonna follow me around to the end of the day. And then you can start marking heel, good heel. You always wanna make sure that when you're handling the dog, you're mirroring what you wanna see out of the dog. So again, with you, it was two hands, looking down, walking forward. You're gonna run into the oncoming traffic. You don't wanna do that. You wanna just nice and relaxed, heel. Good, heel. Okay, just like this. And if you need to give her a little bit of leash pressure, all you do is you kind of flick your wrist right here. So you just kind of roll your wrist a little bit. You don't have to. Nope, not with her. This is really, really nice. So you just do some inside turns to start that relationship, start developing in this craft here. Sit, good sit. Break. Good job, baby. Very good. Well done. So right now you're kind of like this and you need to straighten that out, okay? Just straighten it out. Nice and relaxed, shoulders straight, don't look. What everyone does when I tell them to do this is they grab the leash and they start literally running around the room. Slow down, you don't have to run around the room. So when you start, you can just say her name. Oh, she heel, sit, 
Good set. <laughs> See how this arm is? Okay. Match that. There you go. Nice and relaxed. Go ahead. And with the flex, I'm just like pulling up, right? You just snap it. That's all when you're doing it. And, and I'll, I'll walk you through it. So heel. 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 Good. Remember, if, if your arm is up, your dog's doing something they shouldn't be doing. That's what that prong collar does is it communicates. That's why the prong collar works so nicely is because it streamlines your communication. So just look forward. Yep. There you go. There you go. I'll walk right back towards me. Good. And just look forward, look forward, use your momentum. Good. So she's gonna follow you where you go. So if you're not committed to where you're going, she's not gonna commit to you. Right. So you have to really just go forward and really drive yourself. There you go. I call it momentum. Just use your momentum. So when we're introducing the leash pressure and we're introducing the collar to any dog, and no matter if it's a puppy or not, on basic stuff, we make it really easy. You just go into a circle and they understand pressure release systems. So it's a very classic form of escape training. So the dog goes forward and then you just nudge. It's just like horsemanship. Horse goes forward, we go, no, whoa, and we pull back and then they go back and we release the pressure and then the horse stops. It's a classic form of escape training. The next step to introducing leash pressure or the prong collar to a dog or a puppy is to do some directional changes to proof your engagement. So I call it proofing engagement. So when I turn and I say heel, I wanna make sure that she's actually engaged and paying attention to me when I turn. When the collar is on the dog, again, doesn't matter what you use, it isn't about the prong, it's about any collar. Your objective is to simply use the collar to address and communicate. So if she pulls, and you go, ah, ah, heel, pop, pop, it's to tell her, nope. So when you're doing this, the less pressure, the better, because that means she's conceptualizing the actual command. She's capturing what we want her to do. And this is a great way to start that. So left side, no, she heel. Good, and you, heel. Yes, good heel. Heel, bang, good, she runs into my leg. Good, heel, good. Look at my leash though, that's what, heel, heel. Good, so I want her to pay attention to me. So I'll start cutting her off with my body and look what she does. So I'll start looking at me like, what are we doing here, guy? Good, heel, good, heel, good. So I haven't had to use the collar once, but it's there if I need it to communicate. Squirrel comes running into the room. I'm gonna need that correction to say, hey, 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 settle down now, okay? But one finger healing, nice and relaxed. And then you can tell her, good heel. So when you're, so you can stop and ask her to sit. So remember how you just said like, sometimes without the collar, she doesn't do as well. That usually is because we're not marking things properly. When you're walking with her, like your job is to like, there's so many different opportunities to teach her new behaviors. And yes. she knows when she's training. When you go forward and you ask her to do something, so heel and she does it, good heel. Not good girl, not good job, not you're doing good. Mark it, good heel, good heel. Cause then if she goes, uh, nope, heel, bang, bang, right? Same thing with sit, she sits, good sit, right? So you wanna identify each individual command so she captures them separately. So that's all you have to work on because that's why sometimes dogs will become collar aware is because they're like, this is on, that means we're training. It's not necessarily, I'm only listening to this because I need to listen. It means this is what we do when we train. Your voice needs to do that. Okay. The collar is just an enforcement. The collar is just that, hey, if you don't, Here's this. And there's two different politically, you know, unfortunately, there's two different sides to dog training. There's people who believe in correcting and punishing dogs for behavior we don't like. And there's people who despise it and will never do it and right. think that everything else should just be avoidance. Those are the two sides. And yeah, so we- That's what I'm dealing with. And, and that's where I'm just getting confused we'll by all the- That's right. Thank and, you. <laughs> and that's my job is to, f to find the middle. Okay. So how we're training, 97% positive, 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 good heel, good heel, love, 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 all of it. But as soon as we go, hey, but I'm a puppy and I'm gonna pull or I'm gonna jump, ah, uh ah, -uh, positive punishment, then the punishment comes in. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm just, yep. I'm just, like you said, I'm having a hard time marking mm -hmm. the good. Yeah, so just remember, if you say, let's do this, and she does that, good that. Whatever that behavior is. Good. Just like that. So when you're asking her to heal, uh -huh. Good heel. Now just spin around here and then put her into a sit and Zach's gonna grab his dog. So now if, if she gets up, you're just gonna put her back into a sit. So again, this is a great example of another dog coming through as a distraction. Sit. Good, Good. sit. Release your pressure. Sit. sit. Good. Good sit. Back into a sit. Sit. Good. Good sit. And then break. Okay, break. 
Good, so perfect example. Okay, so that was, that was honestly the breakdown of the balanced dog training approach, exactly what you just saw. Okay. You asked her to sit and she goes, yeah, but there's a dog. <laughs> and so she gets up, instead of just telling her to sit again, we gave her a little correction for sitting. So we say, actually, if you don't listen or you completely just deliberately go against me to say, I'm not sitting, there's punishment for that. The longevity and the sustainability of your training will be far better because of the disciplinary correction that we implied to say, if you don't comply, there's, there's punishment-based systems. Long-term, she's gonna go, oh, I don't wanna get in trouble, I'm gonna sit. Versus if I get up, I'm just gonna get ignored by my owner and I don't really care about that. There has to be some sort of guidelines and structure to say, I said sit, therefore you have to sit because that'll bubble up in your entire relationship. You tell her to sit, she gets up, we ignore, okay, no food, negative punishment, I'm gonna step away from you, blah, blah, blah. She's all excited, the dog walks by and she goes, hey, what did you say again? And you go, oh, sit, okay, yeah, sure, okay, bang. They have their cake and they eat it too. They train you, you don't train them. And sustainably, I've trained thousands of dogs. I wanna do what works. I have found that that system works the best. Okay. But that was a great example of that. You said sit, she's like, there's a dog. And you go, ah, pop, oh, okay, boom, sit. So there's actually enforcement or consequence for non-compliance for basic stuff. So your relationship is balanced. And then when she said, yes, good, sit, well done, you pay her.